The brain processes nearly 10,000 visual and oral cues per minute. As first impressions stick, make the customer see your business in the right way. Funky Vibes can ensure your vibes attract the right tribe with their marketing expertise, graphic design, bespoke websites, and social media packages. For more information or a no-commitment initial consultation, simply email your tribe at funkyvibe.co.uk. You're listening to Go Fish, exclusively on the Pod Station. Welcome everyone to the latest episode of the Go Fish Business Podcast. We are recording live from the barn in Wirral, uh, where you can buy fantastic uh, local and artisan gifts. Uh, you can check them out on thebarnwirral.co.uk and on all of the uh, on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we should also mention that because we're doing it live, there may be the odd background noise because it is a vibrant thriving little business so there will be cough machines percolating in the background and happy customers perusing demolition and oh yeah and next door there's, <laughs> we just so happen to have planned it where an entire building's been been demolished next door so that's not that chris's it. hit because he stood up it is someone <laughs> pulling a wall down <laughs> My name is Matt Pollard. My business is Funky Vibes Marketing. Joining me, as always, are our two hosts. We have the Irrepressible, and I know I should use a different name, but when I th- swallow the thesaurus this afternoon, hopefully that'll give me you another description. Yes, and gravy, because I'm from Yorkshire. <laughs> it is Chris Roxburgh from My Marketing Guy. Hi, everybody. Good to be here. And we are also joined by the boss of the show, the social media dynamic whirlwind tornado that is Ishtar Ali of Ancora Interiors. How are we doing, Ishtar? That was a brilliant intro. Thank you. Actually, the best I've ever had. So I know. Thanks. I'd well, like it's to... totally accurate. <laughs> I'd just I'll take it. I'd like to take credit for doing some prep, but I've just made that up in my head right now. <laughs> Sharp, love it. Very yes. Clever. So, um, yes, uh, you haven't misheard my introduction. Uh, it is indeed now the Go Fish Business Podcast. That's right, Ishtar, isn't it? It is. And why is that? Because we want to open up the floor to more people and talk about, you know, general topics that every business will encounter. So I, we just thought it was more relevant to kind of open up the space a little bit more. Indeed. And so we will still be touching on marketing type stuff, but it just gives us a wider variation of topics that we can discuss, gives you a bit more scope to ask for us to cover things. And we obviously, because of our different areas of expertise, will probably allow us to approach those topics um, from slightly different directions. Yeah, that's the beauty of the fact that, you know, the three of us are drawing on our experiences and we've all got very different experiences and we've all been in business for very different periods of time. So it's wholly relevant in terms of what we say, um, but we can tell you what it looks like on the ground and that's the beauty about it. Amen to that. <laughs> of course, with the change of name uh, goes a change of handle on the old socials. Uh, because of course everything has to be consistent doesn't it Mr Oxford? certainly does consistency is king uh, so it's now the at go fish podcast you can find us on twitter instagram uh facebook and linkedin although with facebook and linkedin i suppose you could probably just put the go fish business podcast in and you probably find us equally uh, as easily yeah um we're also going to have a bit of a, a zhuzhuzhoom of the old branding as well and we give are. that update and it's two years old so in my book i'd be uh, nodding my customers to uh, update <laughs> uh, pay me a bit more money <laughs> <laughs> i do think it's important to at least revisit it so i'm, ha- I'm glad that we're doing that so we're going to give that a bit of a tlc yeah. get rid get rid of uh, some of the uh, the imagery we've been using and just give it a bit of a, a lick of paint oh very exciting isn't it mm. I suppose the next thing will be to try and encourage you guys to get in touch with us now that the floor has opened exponentially uh, in terms of topics and the like. So if you want to get in touch with us on social media or if you want to send an email to gofish at thepodstation.co.uk, we might well update that very shortly because we're going to get ourselves a website as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So you 
probably be able to contact us through there too but let's let's not get ahead of ourselves send us an email get in touch with on social media suggest topics of conversation if you have questions or things that you feel we should have discussed or if you fundamentally disagree with us with something that we've said then get in touch with us we we want some engagement absolutely or even a five-star review well of course chris you were, we, com- you were coming to that, weren't well, you? Well, we will take four stars. I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, to be honest, I was going to say I'd sell for to- three. But... That's another topic altogether, isn't it? <laughs> oh, dear. Yes. That says more about me, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to get in touch with us and do so, if you throw in the questions after this show has been released, don't worry, because what we will do is, uh, in the next episode, we will revisit those questions and we'll discuss them um, before moving on to the new or latest topic if you keep an eye on the socials as well we're going to be mentioning what it is we're going to be covering in advance of the release date for the next show so you will also be able to throw in some questions which hopefully we can deal with live on the show itself Mm -hmm. Uh, we may even at some point dare i say go live on the old youtubes why not and the instas yeah again and the facebooks oh yeah well we're old hat now aren't we chris yeah experienced hands <laughs> so um i will have to iron my shirts um chris you'll have to buy one uh, that looks uh, i think this looks okay <laughs> well you can see this on the video so uh if anyone would like to get in touch uh, and comment on i i do like it i've always said plums your color haven't i you do have a, an entirely plum colored shirt Just- I just forgot we were being videoed for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole point. <laughs> Lulled him into a false sense of security. Yeah. <laughs> so the next topic we're going to be covering is going to be business expos. Yeah, business exhibitions. We're going to be looking to see whether it's any good, why you would get a stall there, might, where you might visit them. We're going to be speaking, hopefully, to people who organise them to see why, why they feel that uh, they are worthwhile Uh, we're going to be doing that we're going to be recording that show on the usual day that we do it which will be on a wednesday but that so happens to coincide with the uh, Wirral and chester business fair which uh, we're going to be attending at the new brighton floral pavilion on wednesday the 15th of september um it's 10 30 to 3 p.m and the tickets are free on yeah. Eventbrite so what if you are interested in meeting us or if you you know indeed want to meet other business owners then why not get down to it join Sounds us like in sunny good. New Brighton hopefully it will be sunny mm. in two weeks indeed and um, we are going to be doing some interviews aren't we so yeah. if you are around and you do see us feel free to rugby tackle us um, uh, we'll be wearing branded outfits <laughs> yes yeah. like part of a fan club Christopher, you know when I'm involved, it's going to have branding on it. Although, if we change our logo, we're going to have to change all our hoodies and our (laughs) T-shirts. Which are already in print. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, So, yeah, we are going to be having... We are going to have T-shirts or hoodies or something to that effect on. Weather appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So, if you do see us, come over because we'd love to interview as a business owner just to find out why you like the show, uh, whether there's any topics you'd like us to discuss, talking about the topic itself, the exhibition stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, get in touch with that. Um, And you can also, as I say, keep an eye out on the old socials. Right, topic for today. Pricing, strategy. Ooh. Serious one. It's but actually, a dirty, it's, conversa- it's, dirty topic of conversation, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a super important one, and I don't know any business that hasn't struggled with pricing strategy at all, because it's such a, a big deal. So I am quite excited to talk. I mean, I am excited to talk about every topic, but this one particularly. <laughs> it's tough. How, where do you set your prices? I mean, who who wants to go first? Who wants to tell me what secrets they use to decide what their prices should be? Let me tell you what I find, because I do quite a lot of uh, workshops with startup companies, or I did before before lockdown, and they are starting again in September. Um, and Nice little plug there, Chris. <laughs> well, it's a plug for me, and it's a plug for One Manchester. Because, where, 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 uh, can, where can they go, Chris, if they want to book onto those courses? Well, if they're in the Manchester area, they can go to a company called One Manchester. If they want to book on my courses, which are on Merseyside, then they need to go to uh, to my website, 
which is mymarketingguy.co.uk with two G's in the middle of my marketing guy. Anyway, just to get back to the point that I was making, or hoping to make anyway, I've, I've met a lot of startup companies through, through, through these workshops. And the one error that they all, or the one trap, it's not an error, but the one trap that they all fall into is, is that they undervalue their own abilities and, and experience. Yeah, true. Um, awful lot of people striking out on their own suffer from imposter syndrome, if you like. They won't call it that. I didn't call it that. But they will think, well, if I know this, then there can't be much value to it. So therefore, I can't charge very much. And there was what there, there are there are people in particular who are in the arts and crafts business who come on these workshops to find out about social media and how it can work for them. <clears throat> and they will they will tell me how many hours it's it's taken to create this whatever it might be. And I often find that the amount that they're charging bears absolutely no relationship to the amount of effort and time that's being put in. They're effectively paying themselves about a two pounds an hour. And this is something that startup businesses have to come to terms with because the, the the value of the product that they're creating isn't reflected in the price and there's a difference between price and value. I always get nervous when I'm quoting clients. You always worry about being too expensive. Yeah. I'd never have the concern of worrying about being too cheap, which is obviously an odd way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. But has that changed as your business has progressed? Have you got more confident in your pricing since you, you know, initially started your business? No, I suppose there's some jobs and some clients where you're not as bothered about whether you get the work, so you quote it as you feel it should be quoted. Mm. But for the jobs you really do want, there's that horrible pang of anticipation. Is it going to be too yeah. expensive? Yeah. Are they going to get a quote elsewhere? Yeah, I, it was a bit different for me. I think I started my building business petrified that we were too expensive and I think I made like 50 pound on our first job which is like (laughs) nothing because I was so desperate to get my first customer in but then you know a year and a half down the line I quote exactly what I know our value is and I've got the mentality which I hope I get for interiors that the right customer will find me and if a customer is not willing to pay my price and it's not my customer and i think Quite if right. you get to that point that's like a revelation but most people find it really difficult to get to that point i think yeah where do you start when you're putting your price list together google <laughs> i'll just steal that list. <laughs> you have to research you have to benchmark of course don't you well, you say that, how many businesses or how many of your competitors have their prices on their website for you to be able to Google and find out? Well, this is a really good point because that was an, another topic I wanted to address during this discussion about whether or not people should publish pricing or not, or if they do, actually. Oh, I know, because I've read your notes. <laughs> in my industry, people actually do um, publish pricing, so it was really easy to find other e-designers pricing. So I had a massive Excel spreadsheet full of everybody else it's pricing and it's just like right I'll stick myself in there but for building contracting it's different because every project is different and so you can't publish pricing so you have to just you know give a price based on what your costs are and that's it I certainly put my social media management costs on my website now I didn't but do you know what um, it is what it is. Um, People can deselect themselves if they think it's too exactly, expensive, and exactly. I think that that is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. I'd prefer to be transparent and have it out there. Exactly. I don't know why people are so fearful. Well, I know why people are fearful for it, because some people, the people who are perhaps super cheap or those who are exceedingly expensive, don't want people to know that, and therefore are reluctant. The number of times where, certainly with the drone stuff, the, the terrible in the drone services world where you'll quote a price and I think my prices are really quite competitive. But, I mean, the last job I did, they, I, I was undercut quite substantially by someone else. 
and because the price was a competitive one i have no idea how that person's going to make any money yeah. and the irony is they're shooting themselves in the foot by doing that because ultimately they're driving down the average price for doing a job because yeah. the expectations for people will now be so that customer now expects that price for that job they'll go tell someone else that's how much they paid for that job and so that person now has an expectation and so what they're actually doing is they're driving the whole market down or potentially driving it all down and i suppose some people might say yeah but we'll get the work but if you're doing 10 jobs and you're making five percent profit do you want those 10 jobs would you not rather do two jobs and make the same amount of money yeah yeah. I think at the beginning you might have that thought process that you know go in cheap and get as many jobs as you can because then it goes to like reviews if you could do a good service but ultimately it doesn't pay dividends because you just end up working like a chicken or some other headless chicken, headless chicken. thank you Mark <laughs> that's alright I was interested to see which animal you are going to use there yes. I did struggle but I mean you do end up like running around yourself a little bit um, until you realise actually if I just do one job at the right price it's it's uh, you know better than doing five jobs at a lower price yeah. does that mean being creative then with your prices so uh, discounts giveaways You've got to be careful haven't you because <clears throat> discounts and giveaways what are you giving away you're actually giving away your margin so yes use them but use them sparingly don't let them become a, a matter of uh, uh, which furniture company was it that always had a closing down sale <laughs> yeah they're it, still open now is it M- uh, well if they'd like to be a sponsor of the show <laughs> <laughs> is it's, it it's finally closed down actually oh, was the, it? the company that that was doing it has has finally closed down it did during the pandemic 20 years on from its first closing yes, down sale yes <laughs> yes but, but but if you if you adopt that tactic nobody ever believes you and nor did we believe they were always closing down eventually it was going to be right but but we would wait for the next closing down sale if we missed the first one wouldn't we but that's what i mean if you're creative with those can you is that a better way of going cheap so uh, rewarding loyalty mm. or adding in services that you can afford to absorb within the profit margins but not to the same extent but making people feel like they're doing it to give you an example there are pizza production people and if anyone's watching the video of this they'll probably realize i am somewhat of a connoisseur of the old pizza um <laughs> from the way I'm breathing in and wearing a baggy <laughs> jumper. Uh, they are a right royal pain in the bum. I went home to my parents this weekend, and uh, on the Sunday we decided to order a pizza, and they ordered three large pizzas, which were probably still too big for the three of us, and it came in at 60 quid. Wow. 60 for three pizzas? They ordered three extra large pizzas, which are huge, and it came in at 30 quid. And it's like, hang on a minute, we've just got the same number of pizzas but they're bigger and it's 30 quid cheaper and it's because they put those every single time you ring up these uh, probably people know which companies i'm talking about every time you ring up there's an offer on which isn't really an offer it's basically brings the bill to the same price it's just how you reach that price it might be you buy one get one free or if you buy two you get them half price it's the same thing it's still going to cost whatever it is 15 quid I think there's there is definitely like room and space for it because you know if your business is seasonal you might have winter periods where it's a little bit slower for example or the summer period when everybody goes on holiday I can see that businesses could use special offers or discounts or prize giveaways or whatever during that period to maintain you know some level of basic business during like slower periods or indeed if you're celebrating an anniversary of your business or you're starting a business I mean and you don't have a lot of projects like totally you would use that kind of incentive to try and you know boost business in some way so I think if you use it sparingly it's definitely a, a benefit and I think people should consider doing it plus it makes a lot of noise on social media if you can start to give away stuff free although we have tried it in the past haven't we and we haven't really succeeded very well I suppose that's a brilliant example Chris of pricing how much of a factor is it really in someone's decision we we were running a competition for our 50th show weren't we we were we were, we were all giving stuff away for free and it was worth like 900 quid in total and trying to get someone to 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 come up for it was it was it was like trying to, teeth, yeah. Was trying to yeah 
Yeah, but people are very cynical these days, aren't they? They think oh, nothing's free. There's no such thing as a free lunch. And generally there isn't. But in this case, there was. But that's a good example of why offering it for free or for a nominal price might not necessarily be the best way of getting that work. No, quite agree. Well, maybe we positioned it in the wrong way. I don't know. I don't would right. You sur- can all pay full price for it, you <laughs> miserable yeah. Santos. I mean, I'd be willing to try it again <laughs> and maybe go with a different way of presenting it. I, I mean, there could be 20 million reasons why that didn't go, but I still think that it, you can genuinely do a nice thing and, you know, it not have to be reciprocated anyway. Totally. What other factors do you guys use for determining your prices beyond copying your competitors <laughs> <laughs> well there is a mathematical element to it isn't there you've got to cover your cost got to cover your costs you've got to work out the amount of your own time that, that's all the involved. overheads yes uh, uh, overheads the lot hands up who's got a spreadsheet yeah oh there you go are you watching on the video we've all got our hands up everyone's got a spreadsheet baby yeah do you we, use oh. it for every job when you're quoting then yeah i do i do you have to have your spreadsheet <laughs> I don't know who doesn't use a spreadsheet for work. Do you print it off and take it to bed with you and cuddle it like a teddy bear? <laughs> yeah, if I wasn't trying to save paper, I totally would. <laughs> you just cuddle your laptop instead with it still open on the screen. Yeah, and, but I mean, some accounting softwares give you the ability to do your pricing on, on their systems, but um, the one I use doesn't uh, doesn't give me that option, but I know some do. Doing an, a review with your accountant when you're setting up and just establish what your overheads are going to be or your expect, expected overheads are going to be and just make sure that your pricing covers it because you'll have to do your business plan. Well, that's interesting. You you just mentioned the A word there, accountant. accountant. Do, you, do you work with what? your accountant? <laughs> <laughs> do you work with your accountant to, on pricing? Honestly, I haven't, but... In hindsight, I think it would have been a useful topic. However, you only get your accountant when you start your business, or, or at least I did. I didn't have ever have an accountant before I started my business, so I don't feel like I had a relationship with my account an accountant well enough to be able to set a pricing strategy. I was like, I'll do it myself. But if I was to open a new business with my established accountant, I would probably use his expertise to say, what do you reckon? Because we've got some data in terms of like what the market looks like or whatever if that makes sense yeah well it's calling on somebody else's expertise and experience isn't it yeah i think more than one perspective is always useful when you're doing stuff like this just test the water isn't it what factors do you uh, include then when you're working out your overheads because we used overheads but that's quite a generic description of the things you're calculating to determine your price depends on your business doesn't it Okay, so you're talking materials, things you're actually maybe paying for. Insurances, legal costs. Yeah, um, licenses for stuff. Licenses, yeah. Accountants fees, subscription, yeah, marketing costs, all of this kind of stuff. And the main one, time. 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 It often gets neglected, doesn't it, though? Hugely. I know, I've neglected time. Probably not here. Oh, you have? I have neglected time in, in pricing previously. Right. I'm much better with it now, yeah, but yeah. certainly at the beginning I did not... I was trying to break even, and I think lots of businesses could, will resonate with that with that thing. Like, I just want to be able to cover yeah. my, you know, tangible expenses, and then in year two I'll try and make a little bit of money for myself. Yes, and a toehold in the market is uh, is probably the, the ambition at, at that stage as well. Yeah. Which is why... So many startup companies do undervalue their services or products, mm. um, desperate to get that toehold in the market. It and it's very difficult. If, you, if you're if you priced, should we say, very competitively or preferably low, it's very difficult to get that rate up. Uh, it's, e- it's easy to start high and go down. It's not so easy to start low an increase. Nobody likes being told that what they've already paid for is going to be more expensive second time no. round, I guess, doesn't it, do they? No, but I mean, how does a new business compete in a big market? Yeah. I don't know anybody that would feel, co- well, personally don't know anybody that would feel comfortable setting a price. So, for example, if I was going to set up a drone company, you've been in business for how long? Two years. Okay. So, I, if I just roll up and I'd be like, yeah, I'm charging the same as Mark, but you've got reviews and you've got a customer base and I don't, like, 
that's not logical. I would definitely go in lower than you would. But would customers go into that much research to determine how long you'd been open? I think customers are super critical about the services that they choose now. I mean, look how easy it is. And we've done a, a podcast about reviews before. Look how easy it is for people to sanity check and, you know, check your business before they choose to you know take your service i mean it's such a it's such a common thing i know i never select a service without doing a shed load of research on it what about you guys oh absolutely three three quotes yeah well not always in fairness but uh, generally three quotes yeah and it's not always about the price sometimes if somebody's got a better review absolutely then... no, well no sometimes it's about uh, it's about the chemistry between you and the uh, you and the supplier as well. Yeah. You know, if the I, I would never necessarily go with the lowest quote, quote as a matter of course. If uh, if I had conf- total confidence in the person, then I would, regardless of whether they were low, medium, or high. But we've recently had a house renovated, and we didn't, in any way, shape, or form, choose the uh, the least expensive options. Can I just make a point? That was a really good point that you made on that. Well done, Chris. Yeah, because um, I think being transparent as a new business owner is super important. I know when I started my business, I was telling everybody I was new to the market and I wasn't trying to hide that I'd been in business for, you know, ages. And I think if you're right, customers will resonate with you based on the type of personality that you have. So I think if you set your pricing at whatever point you want to but are personable and you can you know build that rapport with customers in a quick way yeah. then actually it can still work well people by people don't they well yeah ultimately yeah with 22 million uk users linkedin offers a fabulous opportunity to find your ideal clients and to stay ahead of your competition but what do these future clients currently find when they visit your profile First impressions count. So, are you proud of your fantastic profile because it is client ready and written with them in mind? Or do you look at it and wonder how you could do better because you are not generating leads? My Marketing Guy works with those who want to take advantage of the amazing potential offered by LinkedIn. So, for more details, please email guy at mymarketingguy.co.uk to arrange an initial consultation. Remember, your next client is on LinkedIn. Well, I suppose you just touched upon other factors that are a decision-making element to the whole process. Uh, So we're talking about pricing here and going back to the where do you position yourself in the market if you are up against a multi-million pound marketing agency, Chris. how, How do you compete with that? Well, you might not be able to offer the same pricing by virtue of I know printers who have to charge more because they're smaller because the the print costs the overheads to them yeah they haven't got the buying power power. exactly so but but those are other factors you've you've just perfectly and eloquently mentioned a couple of other factors that people might take into the equation so it's that personal element they might get more better client care because you've got a smaller base that you're looking after they might be able to come and see you whereas it might be a more remote process if you're dealing with a bigger business are these things that people probably weigh up as an equal importance to price I, i think so it depends how price conscious each individual buyer is and and we're all different aren't we and we're all different at different stages in our lives and at different uh, the different sorts of products that we buy well do you have i mean i used pizzas before <laughs> perhaps going, <laughs> to, going really to my mental now. state yeah <laughs> and does anyone have any pricing stories that particularly pop into their head where price either was such a relevant point or perhaps wasn't in the circumstances is a is there anything service you use regularly where it doesn't matter what the price is you're still going to do it or actually there's something way more important that makes you do it clothing yeah i guess many people have an affinity to a certain brand and so they may always go to that brand even if they're more expensive because the fit works better or it looks better on them or whatever the cinema for me so um i pay for more expensive tickets to go into the gallery of a well-known cinema brand 
um, even though I'm paying more, it's because then I don't have to sit with public plebs. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm joking there. It's because <laughs> because I love watching the film. Usually when I go and watching films I really want to watch, I don't want to be disturbed. I want that same experience I would get sitting in my living room. I don't want, and I don't know why they do this, cinemas sell the world's noisiest food. Everything's yeah, incredibly yeah. noisy. You'll get people who literally can't put the phone down for more than five minutes constantly opening up the screen and what have you and i just don't want that so i'm happy to pay more to be removed from that and be in a in a situation where i don't have that to contend with so i can just purely enjoy the movie mm. and i don't mind paying more for that because that but there are other people who won't be bothered by those things who will, won't want to pay that extra price yeah, yeah. they're quite happy sitting in and amongst the people with the carry bags um and the nachos um i mean i don't don't get me wrong i like eating. I, like, <laughs> I quite i quite like eating the nachos i just don't want to hear everyone else eating them <laughs> what that comes Popcorn. in with their own boys i think it's yeah. called hypocrisy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah i think right. i think holidays would be mine don't do cheap and cheerful if you're going to go away have a bit of uh, have a bit of luxury in either in either a self catering and you can get luxurious self catering um accommodation or hotel so yeah that would be that would be mine if you're going to do it do it properly i agree does it matter uh, we we always like to bring this back chris to your marketing strategies <laughs> or now with the business podcast your business plans mm -hmm. because doesn't it matter about it doesn't it isn't it relevant for the target market you're after yeah you've, Absolutely. you've just given a, yeah. an example there of holidays but what happens if i can't afford a nice holiday i'm after i, I will take whatever gets me into the sun sand beach holiday i'm trying to afford and um, whereas as you say there will be people like yourself who perhaps are more discerning so are there holiday well there are well, we know I, we know the answer to that there are holiday companies who pitch for both types don't yeah. they i'd miss i'd miss a year's holiday and go on a better one the following year and we've done that there's nothing worse and i have done it there's nothing worse than going on holiday and being totally at odds with the accommodation and uh, just not relax you, you don't relax if you if you end up in accommodation either a hotel or self catering that just really isn't uh, isn't up to scratch is there anything you've ever done if uh, which you felt ripped off by you've just thought by jingo that's left me feeling cold and empty <laughs> and dark inside <laughs> I wish I'd left my wallet at home on that particular day I guess it's anywhere where you could just go in and pay full price for something and then a week later it's discounted and you're like god damn well isn't that a great yes, example I mean example. Uh, there is a television uh, company who are particularly guilty of that where for existing companies uh, for existing customers you're paying say £30 a month for one of the packages but if you get a new customer, you can pay half price yeah. for that yep. for 12 months. Yep. Which, as an existing customer, when I was an existing customer, I that used to really irk me. Yeah. yeah. I used to ring up and go, well... Why can't I why get the can't, same? Why yeah. can't I get that? And they go, well, it's for new customers on. It's like, why... Am I not as important as a new customer? Now we're we're going into a different field here, aren't we? We're talking about uh, is the should there be a reward for loyalty? Because I've just done something similar with um, my insurance. My insurance is at home. I've switched. Well, I decided for once in my life, I get some comparative quotes, which I did, and I've shaved four hundred pound a year off my uh, motor motoring um, expenses. Now I could have I could have done that ten years ago, but I've been loyal to to that one particular company for all that time, and um, that's the thanks I get. I'm paying way over the odds, and I think that loyal loyalty should be rewarded. Now, do you have a do either of you have any mechanism whereby you might uh, you, you might reward reward a, a loyal customer with a, with 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 whatever. That's, I mean, that's a good question. I suppose I would say that I don't offer any incentives for new customers, so everyone gets charged yeah. the price. And I suppose that that doesn't necessarily mean I shouldn't 
reward loyalty but i guess to take you back to the example i just gave i'm not rewarding new people to the detriment of the existing ones but i suppose there is a loyalty scheme discount or i mean for me retainer clients i always say to a retainer client what you pay for you get way more value for your money because there's a whole other element of a whole raft of factors that mean that I can be more efficient and I'm more prepared to do more and I'm prepared to turn it around faster and just because you are that loyal person yeah, so I yeah. suppose it's not price that they get an extra benefit for being loyal they get other things but there is a reward I'm with you yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't differentiate between um, new customers and existing customers exactly what you said what about mates rates oh. <laughs> hands up who's done a mates rate and regretted it well yes yes, yes <laughs> we've all yeah. got our hands up for the benefit of those not watching the video god it's such a topic in it because it's so emotive you guys asked me to decorate your room I'd probably just do it for free <laughs> I know but what happens if I actually turn out to be an ass. It's like I don't like it. Turn out to be. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> I, no, no, it's be fair nice. comment. He knows me well. <laughs> if it transpires that I am the person that I am, and I'm an ass, um, it, and I, I, I mean, I not only are you not making as big a profit because you're doing it at mates rates, but it takes you twice as long, and it's still not right, and I'm still begrudgingly causing you grief because I'm still not happy just because I'm one of them. And you end up falling out. Yeah. yeah, but would you give mates rates to just a random mate or would you give it to somebody who you knew well? Because I wouldn't give it just to a random mate. I know, but there's certain things, I suppose, that float people's boats or they're more pedantic about, aren't they? And you might not necessarily know that's the case until you actually do the job. Maybe. I used to do it with legal work. was ter- I mean, I stopped doing it very quickly where you'd, you'd help someone out with a legal problem and it would just suck up your time. And imagine. mainly with legal things, no one was ever left <laughs> feeling satisfied. So there'd be a grumble. And then you had your indemnity insurance, so you had to create a file for it because if anything went wrong yeah. and they wanted to sue you for uh, professional negligence, you had to have all the paperwork to deal with that sort of a potential issue. Yeah. It was just a hazard and very, very... I mean, to be honest, I don't even think I probably did create do anything that was a sort of a, a favour it all had to be done properly whether I charge for it or whether I charge, charge the right amount that's where perhaps the factors came in but yeah. I probably with the exception of very close friends and family always regretted not charging what I should have charged for that job yeah. don't do it people yeah well how do you say no or how do you no <laughs> it's not that easy Mark look in a mirror <laughs> It's not that easy, and like these people may know family members, and then you know it gets a little bit political. I mean, but it, I suppose that's a strategic thing. Are you saying are you saying yes to somebody who might pass you new work? It might be someone who's passed your work. It might be someone who's a very close family friend who might have done other things in your life which has helped you, which perhaps have been of an equal Each case is imposition. Be isn't yeah, it? that's what I mean. Yeah. I suppose, yeah. again, yeah. there's other things to, to factor in. I think, Ishtar, you might find that you're too busy. Well, actually, that's exactly the point that I was going to make, that if a mate does say, oh, can you decorate my room or whatever, I'd be like, oh, I'm fully booked till January. And I think that that's a nicer <laughs> way to say no. <laughs> Not that I've done that, by the way just to clarify in case anybody's listening yeah in case one of my <laughs> customers is listening now this might be a stupid question you will tell me but um how do you know if your customers are going to be willing to pay your price i suppose the easy answer is well you'll have no business um but how how might you know that that might be meaning you lose out on quotes demographic research isn't it do you follow up on people that you've sent quotes out to Yes. If you don't hear from them? Yes, always. How many times do you follow up? Twice max. And Twice then I let max. it go. Wow. Yeah. I always find that quite disappointing when people don't reply when you're giving them a quote, just saying, how are you getting on? If if you're not interested, that'd be great, but I'd just love to hear uh, it, why it might yeah, not have been me. It absolutely riles me up that people don't respond to quotes. How much time does it actually take to do a quotation? Sometimes, especially in building... I spend hours doing quotations, so for somebody just not to write a two-minute email to say no thank you, absolutely drives me nuts. Do you know that that there are all sorts of stats about follow-ups, and 44% of salespeople, so in other words, somebody who's given a quote to somebody, it doesn't have to be, it could be a business owner uh, stroke salesperson, they give up after the first 
follow up. The most successful salespeople carry on and they get a decision after the fourth or fifth or sixth time. No, I would never go that far. Never. To maximum and then I just move on. It's tough, isn't it? I, I understand what Chris is saying, but if you if you feel like you've wasted time doing the quote because they've not come back to you on the two follow-up check, bearing in mind you've sent them the quote, that's one, mm. and you send them two chasers, so you sent, you've taken the time to try and contact them three times, plus the time you'll have spent with them to put the quotation together. together. At, at what point do you go, ah, how much time? I, I, if it's the fourth email I'm sending, I'm now actually eating into the profit margins if I'm even lucky enough to get the job. Because if they t- suddenly turn around and go, yeah, you can have the job, you go, great, um, stick another 100 quid on that because that's how much bloody money it's cost me chasing you to get the answer in the first place. I wouldn't be sending them emails. Uh, I'd be ringing them up. Oh, I thought you could say go knocking down on the door, <laughs> kick the door in. <laughs> you can in. do, yeah, yeah. Call in. You know, just passing. Um... Any news on the uh, quotation that uh, that I gave you recently? Wow, I'm not sure I'd have the bravery to do that. I have done that, not very often, but I have done that. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I shouldn't feel that way, should I? It's, it's, I don't no, know. you shouldn't. It's an insecurity of my part, clearly, I, I, that I, I would even feel embarrassed about chasing someone. They, they should feel guilty about not having given you... A d- definite yes or a definite no. That that that's the point that I have. Like, if after two tries somebody hasn't bothered to come back to me, do I really want to work with someone like that? And I don't want to make them feel guilty either or yeah. feel bad because if they feel bad, I'll feel bad about making them feel bad, which no sounds oh, ridiculous. Yes, but you, but you, there no, are it ways, makes sense. Actually. There are ways around that, though, aren't there? Um, and you, you 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 don't need you're not being aggressive with your follow up. It is a case of just wondering if you've made a decision yet. Can I, can I ring you back in a month? When you get the not yet, can I ring you back in a month then? Has there ever been an occasion where you've given a quotation to somebody and then they've said that your price is too high, can you reduce it and you actually have? Um, Ooh, that's a good question. Th- there has been, for me, there's been a situation where <clears throat> they've said the price is too high, so I've gone back and said, OK, let's look at what we can what we can take out. So you know, I haven't negotiated on. It's not going to. It's it's not going to take me as much time by cutting something out. So we cut that element out, and then it comes within their within their budget. budget. But they don't get the full facility. So do you ascertain the budget before you do a quotation? I have tried in the past. Yes, you don't always get it. You know, and the, of course the other the other element is is the old gold silver and bronze service as well um it, that's a bit old hat now people call them different things these days but three ha- baby ha- having three levels of service or vibranium <laughs> yeah. ha- having three levels of service and saying well you, you won't want the cheaper one because that's not um um and the 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 top one is possibly possibly too expensive. Uh, let's have a look at the middle one. The interesting thing this was explained to me uh, many years ago. You've just taken. You've just told them that they can't afford the top one. They then become interested in it. That's worked for me on a on a couple of occasions, and I know it works for for other companies beautifully. You've got to be a very very good salesperson to get away with that though but to be able to dangle the the gold the gold service in front of them so that that's possibly too expensive so so let's concentrate on the middle one chris with your mind warfare. oh man go on chris have it, a think about that one the other thing you've got to bear in mind there are the more scrupulous people out there who will always be trying to save a few pennies of course. who just have that hard nosed faced ability to go not 50 quid off or can't you do that a bit cheaper or oh yeah i've, I've had an offer from somewhere else and uh, it's a bit cheaper if you knock the price down i'll go with you know those kind of people i know a couple of people who do that mm. um, and i always say no to those people for me i always my, my comeback is just simply it's a fair price i've yeah. put some thought into why it's that price you don't want me to do it for cheaper because there'll be no motivation i don't want to do it for cheaper so it is what it is and if that's no good then by all means go with the cheaper one but cheaper isn't always better as i think we've already discussed buy cheap buy twice indeed or oh, pay, pay peanuts get monkeys <laughs> been dying to say that all all session i, I thought as much because he was in the show notes 
No, but you're right, Mark. Always be prepared to walk away from uh, from a bad deal for you. Absolutely. Um, how often do you review your prices? In my case, every time I do a quotation. How often do you do it? I don't know. I haven't really thought of that too much. Do you publish your prices? Um, they're not on the website as such, but that's largely because there's that many different things that can f- that we can do. It, it'd be like what a war and peace with the mm. website but I'm not if people want a quote I'm happy to put something together and it's it's a no obligations quote so we, uh, they can say I would like that and I do have packages that I put together particularly for like startup businesses which I will send them so they can see what everything is and then they yeah. can determine which pieces or which services might be of most use to them right mm. there and then and I, and I guess if you were doing an assessment of your business, you'd look at how much work you've had of a particular type. And if you're getting a huge amount of one type, is it because you're charging too little? Or if you want more of another one, is it because you're quoting too much? And yeah. I suppose it's those annual business Reviews. assessments, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Definitely. What about you? I have packages for interiors, which is as transparent as it could be and going back to what I said before I have it that way because I want people to deselect themselves from my service but I also offer bespoke packages on there so I give myself a one leg in one leg out kind of scenario so if somebody does want a little bit of a mishmash I will do it for you but I think that for me is a comfort zone because I've gone from not publishing any prices at all and being very frustrated with that process of taking time to do quotations to now being uber transparent with it and just putting it out and i would absolutely do what you do an annual business review see how many of what package yeah. i've sold yeah. and then um review it as a lawyer i always had uh, my prices on the website and that was before most firms probably did yeah as a general rule they were always very reluctant for that whole it was almost like a, a secret club nobody wanted to tell the world what they charge for fear of someone going in cheaper or trying to undercut and what have you and I, I there's now rules for solicitors where they have to have the prices on the website mm. but it i did it way before these rules were introduced because i was very much of the opinion they are what they are you can see what you're getting you're then making a determination based on other factors if you want to go away get a quote and go cheaper then that's the the, you're rolling the dice there and i'm satisfied that if you come with us you won't feel like you've been had over but i think the easier you make it for somebody to access your pricing the better it is for you because how many times do you submit a quote for a quote on a website and it might not come back or it takes forever to come back and if i was looking to buy a service if somebody at least has a starting price on there then i can again select or deselect myself from that rather than you know sending 50 emails out and waiting for responses to come back so i think there's a you know a potential for both to be and if you're worried about being undercut people are going to go away and if th- those pe- those anyway. people are going to go away and get those quotes yeah. you're going to get undercut anyway it doesn't yeah. isn't you're not changing the you outcome yeah you can't compete on being the cheapest because you'll never be the cheapest so why bother absolutely mm. well i think pricing we've we, we've been quite comprehensive there yeah. in an overview type of way it's been interesting <laughs> Yeah. It has been interesting, hasn't it? Mm. Hopefully it's been interesting to you as the listeners. Maybe we haven't covered a topic. Maybe there's a factor we haven't mentioned. Maybe there's a question you now have either in terms of the topic as a whole or a question you have about us yeah. and something that we've said. And our experiences, yeah. It is a vast subject. There's there's an awful lot we won't have covered and it would be interesting to have questions. Yeah, so if you want to do that, you can direct messages on the social medias. Yeah. Uh, it's the Go Fish Business Podcast or at Go Fish Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can send an email to gofish at thepodstation.co.uk or, or you can accost us in the street. Yeah. Um, or you can come and ask us um, at the Wirral and Chester Business Fair, Fair, which is the 15th of September at New Brighton Floral Pavilion in the Squirrel. Yeah, Squirrel. Love Parking that. very easy. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Um, you're probably wondering, because we haven't done a... We, we like the old competitions, or we, we usually do a bit of a challenge each week. Last week we did a personality test. We established Chris is a feeler. 
Um, and lawyers uh, have been called in since then. Comparable to Britney Spears, which <laughs> sounds quite amusing. Uh, this this week we're going to do a probably do a price challenge yeah. thing over the old social medias. Yes. So keep an eye out for that. Mm-hmm. That'll be dropping in the next week or two. What format will that take, Mark? Well, it'll, it'll probably a post. We, we'll probably be throwing out things where you can guess the price. It'd be it'd be like um, Bruce Farsight, uh, wouldn't it? Yeah. Play your cards right. <laughs> higher, lower, higher than an ace, lower. Oh, well, that one where they used to be on a conveyor belt in the 80s. What was that? That was a generation game, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Oh, man. Throwback. Chris doesn't remember these because he was out clubbing on, <laughs> at that time. He's probably playing <laughs> cricket. That was on a Saturday, wasn't it? <laughs> we, yeah. we, we were young weeing, so we were <laughs> watching it on Saturday nights, weren't we? <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, the tool tip that we usually come up with, I think we were only in agreement that Google is your friend for this. Google is your very best friend. For market for, research. For, for yeah. research into competitors' pricing. Do you know what? I used to have a business manager who used to ring up uh, oh, other yes. businesses to get a quote. That's a great idea. I, yeah, she always had to do it because I never had the, the gumptions oh, to do either. it. No. No. So she'd ring up and get a quote for stuff. And like, oh, my God, I feel so naughty. Yeah, get your friend to do it or your mum. Whoever. <laughs> you couldn't do it these days because the, the phone number pops up, doesn't it? <laughs> so they just ring you back. <laughs> Be really dirty, get a burner phone. Yeah. <laughs> Pay as you go from Tesco. We know where to get one from. <laughs> Spend that tenner <laughs> exactly. on your competitors. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, guys, thank you very much for another fantastic show. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Yeah. I didn't think yeah. price was going to come from Yorkshire. Price is usually a sensitive topic for me, but I enjoyed you, that you, more you than me. You embraced it, Mark. I did. Yeah. I'm going to go for a Very lie good. down now. Oh, no. <laughs> and I left my wallet at home just in case. <laughs> no, it was good. Brilliant. Good. Well, um, if people want to get hold of us, um, if they want to find us on social media, how can they best find you, Chris? <clears throat> guy at my marketing guy, two G's in the middle, dot co dot UK. What about your uh, socials? Oh, socials, just put my marketing guy in. Or my own name, Chris Roxborough. Brilliant. I'll pop up. <laughs> Ishtar? Um, Ishtar Ali on LinkedIn and Ancora Interiors on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, indeed. And same for me, just stick my name in on the old LinkedIn if you're going to do it, or at Funky Vibes with a three instead of a knee. I love it. I'm going to say, give us a follow on the social medias. Drop us a review on whichever platform you're using to listen to because it massively helps us get a bit more exposure. And um, yeah, we're going to be, so, I suppose we should also mention, we're going to be starting some business spotlight segments on the show yes. as well. Yes. Very exciting that we're actually going to shed the light on other small businesses through social media in an attempt to pay it forward, do I, dare I say those words. Ooh, but you know, been taken. share the love and you know just help each other be connected with each other indeed yep. so if you would like to do that or be Send part of that a dm yeah. and uh, i will be in touch splendid guys thank you very much as always thank you, thank you fantastic you. job and we hope you've enjoyed it we'll catch you later bye Have now out. bye get social at go underscore fish marketing on instagram facebook and twitter